Hello, sportsmen. Welcome to this Thanksgiving Day show. You're probably stuffed full of turkey right now watching this show sideways on the couch, but that's okay. This is a laid back show. We're going to show you some of the segments that we didn't get to show you on our opening day deer report. You're probably going to want to close your ears for the recipe, but stick around for the big bucks at the Mill Creek Buck Pole in Dexter. They are huge. I'm Fred Trost, and you're watching the Ooh, Thanksgiving Giving Day show here on the Practical Sportsman. If you can see where they're they do cross. Oh yeah. You can use this tree as a nice marker. Uh, they call this a lost gun blind because I shot a nice 10 pointer out here one night. Ran back to the house to tell everybody. We all came back out and uh, we looked at the, the, the buck and we were all excited about that. And someone said, well, what's this over here? I'd forgotten my gun and was laying in the snow. So, hence that's, the... That's one version of the story. That's one version of the story. Now, that's not the version that I've heard. This is the true story. No, this is the lost rifle. And he okay. accused everybody in his family, like all younger brothers go through all their life, you know. Uh, where's my uh, gun? You know, where's my shirt? Where's my shoes? So, after three days of listening to Dick, where's my gun? And then he uses his son, Jason, and says, oh, where's my gun? And we keep saying, no, Paul, we don't have it. You know, and we try to be respectful. We don't want to get him upset and everything, older brothers like that. So uh, finally, you know, we always, uh, after we shoot a deer, we normally have a cigar, maybe a glass of wine, and go relive the story. So a couple days later, the weather breaks, and uh, we go out to his blind, and uh, uh, he's showing us how he shot the deer. He's, you know, I shot, the deer came out over here, and I, I shot the deer, and it went out in the field and fell down, and I, I ran out there, and I uh, uh, walked over, and the deer fell right about here, and I, and I put my gun down. Oh, there's my gun. <laughs> he picks it up and the grass is frozen to it and everything else like that. And then that's how it became Lost Gun Blind. Now, he won't admit it, you know. But how he long says an old, that... an old Indian named it. <laughs> how, how long was that gun lost? I think it was three days, three days out there. And it did hold up well. Uh, what he said was like it was momentarily. No, like no, it was, no. No, that's what I thought. That's no. what I heard. We, you know, everyone avoided him for those three days, you know, because it's always, <laughs> oh, hi, Dick, where, where's my gun? Where's my gun? <laughs> I, I don't have it, Paul. I don't have it. So, what, thank God my gun's similar to his, but only I have different wood, better wood, mm -hmm. on mine, and so he couldn't say it was his, because normally that was, that's my gun. Oh, uh, yeah. So, <laughs> you know, Paul, this, this one's mine. This one's mine. So you went back to relive it, and oh, there it was, there it right was. where just, left Just, it. he said, and I put my gun. And there it was, <laughs> just like that. We all just looked around, just kept moving. Just get away from them. <laughs> Let them figure it out, you know, because there's a little grass stuck to it, a little rusty. You're going to be working on it. <laughs> so that's and that's the true story, not the old Indian one that named it, you know, after his lost squaw or something, you know, <laughs> lost the gun. So that's the true story. Maybe it was the next day. <laughs> no, the next east side of the field, the north side, then over to the west. Mm -hmm covers a lot of ground. A lot of people say a blind like this is for wimps. But but it's you know true. what? It's quite how it though. Boy, it sure is looking like a buck. Yeah, but it's... Okay, the one that's running? Yeah. It's... No, that's got no antlers. Okay. Now it's... It looks like hair on its back is ruffled up. Okay, I'm going to click in the extender here. Find it. If it is, it's a doe that's been chased. It's coming this way. Yep. But but there's deer behind it, up on the hill, is my guess. Looks like a doe. It is. What's that? Yeah, it's, it's a doe. OK, now we've had almost 12 after 5, and we have two does that have come out. One on each side of the blind. They both run across. See, now that one was upwind, the other one was downwind, and they acted the same way. No reason to be alarmed by us. So I'd say the bucks are moving around and chasing them. That's uh, not Bucky. That looks like the one with the mane. Mm-hmm. It's a doe. You want this window down? Oh yeah, thanks, guys. Now that's the first one that's come from 
way down there. This has been regular, fairly regular activity here in the last, since five o'clock. Looking back too. Not a deer every five minutes or so. Trailing. Okay, that, that is a little buck, and that's about a four point. Oh, there he, okay. Now he's, he's definitely tracking the doe. You can see his antlers there. They're... Oh, oh, look at that, look at that, look at that. Oh, it's going, it's going. See, there was a doe that just ran up there like about a minute ago. Yeah, it's right in front of him. He sees her, there she goes. After a day of what I'd call moderate deer activity, the woods were crawling with deer just at dark, bucks chasing does. This blind was in a strategic spot between wooded oh, yeah. hills and a swamp. Oh yeah, you get a good shot this way, John. You can see how, how they're not gonna wanna cross all that open stuff down there. So they're gonna funnel up through here, where the blind is, hopefully come right across here. Of course, it would probably work too to the, what, south there? East? That would be the east. But this is a good, good funneling point. Maybe 100 yards east of it, on the other side of our blind, is a doe followed by two fawns. So we've had activity across from us, to the west of us, to the east of us, and they're crossing right where Paul said they would, the narrow part of the field. Now you can see the configuration of the land looking at an aerial photo of Paul Keyswetter's property. The little hands are pointing to the large open fields to the east and west of the lost gun blind. Uh, deer don't like to cross those large fields. They prefer to cross at the narrow point between the woods and the swamp. That's where deer cross most frequently, that narrow field that connects low ground with high ground. The deer we saw traveling between the swamp behind us and the wooded hills in front of us were traveling very few stopped for carrots, and that's where my buck crossed on the morning of the second day. It's a four point. He's gonna go. You ready? Yeah. That hunt turned out to be a success, but of course that was on our opening day report. I wanna show you a couple of video clips now that didn't make it on our opening day report, starting with this little encounter between a deer and a crow. Look, we have a deer and a crow. The crow is trying to get on the, in towards the bait. And this little, I think it's a buck, fawn, doesn't want that crow around. He's pushing that crow out of here. Look at that. Is that funny? Oh, come in on the... He's totally distracted by that crow. Oh, get away from my carrots. <laughs> that is funny. <clears throat> I'm gonna go back to eating, but you stay, get, get. Boy, he's got his tail flared. Doing all the signals and trying to tell that crow you're pushing it. Oh. <laughs> this is too much. You know, this, people ought to, this is the fun of putting bait out. Look at that. <laughs> We'd never see this if we didn't have some carrots out there that both of them wanted. This really makes the day, too. Oh, now they've got a thing. They've got a feud. Oh, stomp at the crow. <laughs> you know, but this is, this is about the only time that little fawn has any authority over anything. Because if any other deer comes into that bait, it's gonna probably be a little bigger deer 
a little older, and he's going to be at the bottom of the pecking order. Boy, that crow is persistent. <laughs> uh, the challenge. Look at that. <laughs> you know, if that deer knew anything, it'd, it'd let that crow come in and say, okay, choke down a carrot. This is really funny. I've never seen anything like that. Well, since things are a little slow, lots of anticipation, but no deer, I think it's a good time to start a new segment on this program. You know, I've gotten letters about my clothing, what I wear. Uh, I think we should have a, a segment we can start right now on this opening day called Fred Trost's Fashion Tips. How about that? All we need is a little music. Can we have a little music? Okay, cool. Little title there, Fred Trost's Fashion Tips. Okay. Now, the fashion tip for this week, for deer hunters. Uh, people have asked me about the, the red clothing that I wear, the wool clothing, wool pants and all that. A couple tips. One thing I'm wearing here right now, and this is for you older hunters or younger hunters that are very active, a little Velcro. In fact, John, you loaned this to me. Mm -hmm. This is a, my back has been killing me the past week. I don't know why, just getting old, I guess. But this is, this is kind of nifty. This is a heat pad that you put in the microwave. It's still warm. Put the microwave, slip it in there, and put it around your back, give you support, and uh, makes my back feel a lot better. But speaking of that area, my wife, uh, we got married in 1988, and I asked for Christmas for a pair of wool pants and asked her to order them a little big, you know, because when you're deer hunting, you put on a lot of clothing. Well, Johnny... Another important thing to get right here, check right here, is the belt. You want to get a belt that's quite a bit larger. Now, I found this belt I have out almost to the end. See, because these pants, I can't, I can't get snapped. <laughs> so my fashion tip is, when you're buying pants for deer hunting, or you ask your dear wife to get you for Christmas, I'd get maybe two, maybe three sizes bigger around the waist than you think you're going to need. You might need it when you get older. That's Fred Trost's fashion tip for the week. Oh boy. Big Buck Night this year will be telecast live from the studios of Channel 56 in Detroit, 8 p.m. Thursday night, December 12th. Now, how does a person get their big buck on the show? Well, you have to have the biggest of the big bucks. We're looking at the different, different point categories from spike bucks on up. You have to fill out one of our entry forms for our Deer Quest Hunting Awards for this year. Now, we're looking at three different measurements, three, three things we're looking at. The number of antler tines, the length of the antler tines, if you got them 11, 12 inches, uh, that's a pretty good shot, and the width of the antlers. We're looking really at 22 inches on up. Now, for example, uh, this, this one here is a top contender. Doug Ash from Owasso got this one. It's an eight point, but it has a 21 inch spread, 10 and a quarter inch antler tines that just might make big buck night. We'll see. We know that some of the big bucks we saw down at Mill Creek Sports on that buck pole, there's a couple of those that are going to make it for sure. Here we go. The premier buck pole in the state of Michigan, I do declare, has to be here at Washtenaw County, Mill Creek Sporting Goods. Who has bucks up here? Anybody have any of these bucks? Anybody speak for any of these? I mean, take a look what's on the end here, John. Look at that. We got one, two, three, four, five. That's a 10-point buck. Look at the size of that, the mass of it. I mean, we were hunting up north, and we saw a lot of deer, but nothing like this. Nothing. There's a tall rack. Oh, look at this one, piebald. Anybody have these deer? I don't know where the hunters are. Let's come in here. Yeah, we didn't see you on the other side. Oh, no, okay. Yeah, turn around this way for the camera here. This is a, a piebald deer, of course. Yeah, piebald, uh, five point, got it in northern Kent County. Oh, just north of 20 Mile Road, north of Grand now, Rapids. Why were you hunting way over there? How did no, you get my over My father-in-law's farm. 
I live here in Dexter, oh, but okay. my father-in-law has a farm up there, so we went, I went up there to hunt. Well, that's a pretty deer. Ha, yeah, had, had this deer been seen before? Have you seen uh, it? No, you? they had seen a couple years ago, they had seen one with spots on it, but I don't believe it was this one because mm. I don't think he's two years old. Going to get it mounted or a head mount? Or? Well, I don't know. We're still considering that. You're still counting yeah. your change and seeing how <laughs> yeah. far it'll stretch? <laughs> right. This one? Next one over. The next one over? Stay, who got it? I did. You did? Yeah. What's your name? Rob Slyker. Rob Slyker? Slyker, yep. On state land? State land. Ten-pointer. This morning? Yesterday morning. Yesterday. Opening day. Wow. My first buck. First buck? Congratulations first buck. on that, dude. Five years in the same area to get this one. Whoa. Hunting in state land for five yep. years? How is it? Everybody says state land. There's all the maniacs out there. You well, know. they're not maniacs, but there's a lot of people. A lot of people, lot but of they're well-mannered and... Uh, most of them. Safe? Most of them. Well, very good. Yeah. Well, congratulations on that. Anybody else have these? I got, I got those two. You got what? Those two right there. I'll hold him. You guys kick him. <laughs> slap him. Hit him. Jeez, <laughs> you got these two. Same area, yeah. yeah. 21 and a half inch spread and a 23 and a half inch spread. Oh, 12 wow. and 11 points. Wow. 12 and 11. That's 23 yeah. points altogether. Yeah, that's... Yeah. Way to go. Like that. Yeah, and here I think this was uh, a doe. Anybody have a confirmation on this? No. It isn't? I shot it. Oh, that isn't, so that was a fib somebody said. Yeah, he just, he had half his parts, but not all of them. Oh, now, what do you mean? Go ahead, be specific. He was missing his testicles. Does it, uh, in, any, uh, why? I don't know. I mean, they just never were they there in the first place? They weren't there at all. They were not there at all. But he had... Mm -hmm. Some of the other male yeah, apparatus. And, yeah, and he was chasing does. He was running with another buck and chasing eight does. But he so just, he was shooting without bullets. That's exactly right. I'll be darned. <laughs> so this one right here is the... He's an oddball. Is an odd... <laughs> is a no-ball. Yeah. He's yeah. He's an it. <laughs> yes. What are the stats? It's an eight-point with a 22 and three-quarter inch inside. Man. So I'm making about 23, all close to 24 outside. Yeah. Okay. Yep. <laughs> Some nice mass on it. Yes. <laughs> this is one heck of a opening day, opening day, opening two days. Yeah. When I was here uh, at noon, this whole backside was filled in already from opening morning. Uh, it's just unbelievable. Boy, this is a, I didn't notice it here. This, of course, we're looking around at these racks. They put the sort of the smaller ones on that side. But I mean, the smaller ones, mine. They all taste the same, Fred. Yeah. They all taste the same. That's right. Well. Yeah, but the the taste is very sweet when you show the pictures and the mount. Ah, and you, right. look look at the size of that. Yeah. Boy, that's a yeah. heavy. Is this yours? That's yeah. Bullwinkle. You know, somehow you can tell. You look at somebody's rack and you just know who got it. There. Nice well, tell me about this. Huh? Just hunting on my dad's farm, and I was going to shoot a smaller one, and all of a sudden this one came out of the woods, and so wow. I changed my mind. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> that must have looked. Was it was it sideways to you? I mean. He, that's, a, that's a heavy rack. Yeah, it was sideways, and I, I shot, and, and then he took off and was running r right away from me and shot him again. Oh, wow. How, what's the size on that? I can't see from 17 here. three quarters. 17 three quarters spread? Yeah. How many points? Nine. Um, why do you um, have this microphone thing? <laughs> why do I? Well, well I, it, I, it's think, so... I think my dad said because so he can speak well, but I don't hear you speaking loud enough. You don't? If I speak up, well, here, tell me if you see any difference now, okay? When I have the microphone. It doesn't make any noise. Well, of course, okay, so it's better if I hold it up close, isn't it? Okay, that's what we use it for. Look in the camera there. What's your name? Michael. Michael what? Wesley Elmwood Jr. I see. You're going to be a hunter? Um, yeah, when I grow up. And how long will that be? Um. How do you know when you're grown up? Well, it's when we get a, like my dad. When you get like your dad, then you know you're there. Yes. Okay, Michael, way to go. <laughs> nice talking with you, with my microphone. Any idea how it compares to last year? I mean, oh, it's hard to. See. You know, I think the numbers might be down just a smidgen, but it seems like the uh, antler size is, uh, you know, phenomenal. Oh, it did. Last year was good, but there seem to be, you know, more bigger ones this mm -hmm. year. So. Well, this has been something else, I will say. If you got a deer this season, here's a recipe you're going to want to try. Big John's Tasty Steak, sent to us from John Summers from Burton. Combine one cup of bisquick, one chopped onion, 
a half teaspoon of pepper, and one and a half tablespoons of minced garlic in a bowl. Set that aside for the breading. In another bowl, mix two eggs with three quarters cups of milk. Beat that well. Then cut two or three pounds of venison into thin steaks, making sure all the fat and fell is removed. That leaves pure trimmed venison. Dunk these steaks into the egg mixture. Roll them in the breading. Drop them into a hot pan with butter, but don't leave them in long. Couple of minutes max so the steaks are pink in the middle. Tender, oh yes, Big John's Tasty Steak Recipe is in the Practical Sportsman section of the November Wilderness Journal. Let's see, Mark Cook, you're from Lyons. You were hunting Ionia County the 24th. It must have been Thanksgiving weekend. Thanksgiving Day. Thanksgiving Day, an eight-pointer with a 20-inch spread, nine-and-a-half-inch tine. You were on Big Buck Night. Yeah. And you didn't, of course, you got to show off this rack, this big rack of this eight point but we didn't hear the story what's the story well i saw this buck november 16th on the second day of season and i watched him for a half hour work a brushy creek line i could have probably gone down and stalked after him but there's another hunter right down at the end of the valley and boy i'd hate to push him to another hunter if i uh, messed up so uh thanksgiving morning i got home from work i worked all night my wife wanted me to sleep a few hours before turkey dinner and I said, I've got to go hunting. And I went down, and uh, I went right down to that brushy creek line where I saw him working it. And I was there about an hour and a half, and uh, all of a sudden I could see the white rack just mm -hmm. coming through the brush. That's all I could see was his horns. He's almost like a ghost coming through there. And uh, sure enough, he's going into thicker and thicker brush, and I had to make up my mind, am I going to shoot now or hope he comes out the other side? Well. They usually don't come out for you. So I took my shot and uh, put him down right there. Mm. Terrific. So you got, you made it for turkey dinner. Now, did you have the relatives over? They had me over, and they had to listen to me all day. I see. <laughs> <laughs> well, I imagine. Well, that's terrific. Mark, good story. Thank you, guys. Thank you. So how was the deer season overall? Matt Radzilowski has called around the state to our guides, report, sources, and we have found in the Upper Peninsula we're talking slow. Of course, Houghton, this was hit real hard last winter. Antonagin says they are seeing lots of does, but not that many bucks. Over here in Marquette, deer hunting very, very slow. On the east end of the UP, Minuskong Bay, deer hunting hit or miss. Drummond Island, they said the deer opener was slow. There, there is ice forming, by the way, for you ice fishermen. It's forming. We're not saying it's done yet by a long shot, so it's still real iffy out there. Indian River, the deer opener, they had 72 bucks hanging on the buck pole at Pat and Gary's last year. This year they had 48 bucks. Gives you an idea of how it's, how it's dropped off. Uh, Traverse City, they are catching Perch and Menominee uh, in the Traverse City area. Houghton Lake, deer hunting reported slow over in Alpena. They call it fair down at Wellman's in Oscoda. Uh, the deer hunting is slow, but the steelhead fishing is fair. Now, Cook Dam is down for repairs right now, so the water is low. Over here at Pilgrim's Village, Steve says deer hunting has been slow around Cadillac, but the steelhead and brown fishing on the west side of the state has been good. Some limits of steelhead at Ludington, uh, catching some steelhead at Whitehall. Down here at Saugatuck, they're getting steelhead oh, 1 to 3. And South Haven reports that the steelhead are best in the rivers, not on the piers right now, in the rivers. And deer hunting, look what we have down here in the southern part of the state. Deer hunting, excellent. We get over here to the east side of the state, uh, get up here to, to Franks and Linwood. They're catching perch, whitefish at Tawas. Lake St. Clair has fair walleye fishing. Deer hunting, good, according to the Buckpole area at Dexter. Trenton, the Detroit River, they're getting some walleye and perch fishing. But here in the southern part of the state is where the good hunting is. Look at the snow conditions. Not a lot. I mean, even in the Upper Peninsula, there's just not a lot of snow around. Uh, but these snow conditions can change from day to day, as can the fishing, as can the hunting. By the way, that's your best excuse for Saturday. The reason you have to go hunting because it could be the best deer hunting day of the year. So be sure to get outdoors. It's a great place to be, and I'll see you back here next week. The official publication of the Practical Sportsman Club is the Wilderness Journal, a monthly outdoor publication full of news, features, and current material on hunting, fishing, and the shooting sports. Members of the Practical Sportsman receive our special insert, which has a weekly schedule of the outdoor and nature programs on public TV, our weekly fish and game recipes, a listing of trophy bucks taken last November 15th, 
an entry form for the Big John Fishing Awards and Deer Quest Hunting Awards. The current edition has comments about the bear referendum by Sal Ghani, Kyle Randall, and several of the people who we featured on this show in October. And if you want to read some hot letters from viewers who let me know what's on their mind, it's all in this issue. A membership in the Practical Sportsman brings you this monthly publication, plus a membership in the Michigan Sportsman Congress. If you'd like a sample copy of the November issue, just drop me a line at Box 1001, Bath, Michigan, 48808, and close a buck for three-day delivery. Uh, the challenge. Look at this. <laughs> you know, if that deer knew anything, it'd, it'd let that crow come in and say, okay, choke down a carrot. This is really funny. I've never seen anything like that. <laughs>